All right, let's go ahead and get this thing going. So welcome everybody to Antiva's Lunch and Learn for November 2023. I'll be your host again, Ted Brown, Director of Product Management here at Antiva. And today we're going to be talking about the much anticipated Microsoft 365 Copilot. Imagine having a personal assistant that can write, edit, research, and create for you utilizing the power of artificial intelligence with your own corporate data. That's what Microsoft 365 Copilot can do for you. Copilot is a new feature that integrates large language models with Microsoft 365 applications, services that you use every day, such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, and much more. Copilot can help unleash your creativity, unlock your productivity, and uplevel your skills with natural language commands and prompts. Where you need to draft a project proposal, summarize a meeting, create presentations, or find relevant information, Copilot can assist you in seconds. And that's what we're going to be talking about within this presentation. We're going to cover a bunch of different topics of Copilot today, but I'm going to kind of start in a little bit of reverse fashion. We're going to talk about what I think is the a kind of the elephant in the room is what is available today for Microsoft 365 Copilot. Get into what I think is going to be available in the early stages of 2024, and then reverse and go back into what is Microsoft 365 Copilot and how does it work. Then take a look at how we can utilize this within Office 365 applications. I do have a video here that can show you how 365 works in action, the Copilot works in action. And then get into Microsoft Bing and Windows Copilot for Windows 11. And then lastly, we have a call to action. Just like other webinars I've done in the past, please uh, use the Q&A section for any and all questions. And I'll answer the questions at the end of this presentation. Also, if you have any ideas for other topics you want to learn for my Lunch and Learns or webinars, please put into the Q&A sections as we're building out a 2024 roadmap for what the webinar topics will be. And we'll go ahead and consider them for future topics. Okay, so like I said, the elephant in the room, what is available currently today for Microsoft 365 Copilot? I don't know if you're like me, I woke up on November 1st uh, and thinking about it was almost like my, my birthday, Christmas, first day of Hanukkah, whatever celebrations you like to do the best. And thinking I had this new toy that I was gonna be able to play with. Unfortunately, Microsoft was a little bit mum on the exact launch of what was going to be occurring and what was going to be available and to whom. Um, what was going to happen on November 1st was this was released to clients that have enterprise level agreements. They can request the ability to utilize Microsoft Copilot. Now, the kicker here as well is you have to actually purchase 300 licenses of Microsoft Copilot at $30 a piece. That comes out to be about $9,000 a month charge for Copilot. You also have to, have to have the ability to have a Microsoft 365 E3 license or a Microsoft 365 E5 license. So if you had a Microsoft E3 license at 300, um, which is $36 per person per month, that comes out to be a little bit over $10,000 plus the $9,000 for the Copilot. You're almost at $20,000 a year to utilize Copilot today. So I really feel like this is more of kind of a soft launch out there because also Microsoft has some asterisks they put in there with the utilization of what you can do with Copilot today. Microsoft has said they can throttle the service if users are utilizing Copilot too much. AI services such as Copilot use a huge amount of resources and Microsoft servers are really having a hard time keeping up with the current demand. Microsoft in turn is actually ramping up their capacity with Co for Copilot by expanding their footprint with data centers, as well as developing their own AI chips, which I think will lead them into what's going to happen with Microsoft 365 in 2024. Now, nothing's been exactly said from Microsoft. I do see all signs pointing that I do expect a Q1 launch for the commercial clients to utilize this at the small mid market. What this means is I think you'd be able to utilize this with no minimum charge, uh, minimum quantity to utilize. So you won't have that 300 minimum quantity to take advantage of it, but I do see the cost still being that $30 per person per month. The other advantage as well as compared to the inter enterprise level agreements is you can utilize this on lower level licensing such as Microsoft Business Premium, Business Standard, Microsoft 365 E3, and Microsoft 365 E5. Now the key part here as well is you actually don't see in here that it has the Office 365 E3 and Office 365 E5. So if you have those licenses, you will not be able to add on the Microsoft Copilot license type. So you need to migrate those licenses to a E3 or E5 or Business Premium. So it's something you might need to do if you take and want to take advantage of Copilot today. Now I do have an asterisk next to the Microsoft 365 Business Standard. 
And the reason being is how Microsoft 365 Copilot works is it needs to scour your information within SharePoint to find the information available to you to bring it up to uh, fruition for what you're trying to find for your prompt. It does require a level of governance available to see if you have access and have the correct permission levels to see those files. That is not available in Microsoft 365 Business Standard today. It utilizes the Azure Information Protection Plans, that protection governance I'm talking about. So if you have the Microsoft Business Standard, you won't be able to get the information you have direct access to within your OneDrive and Outlook. So you won't be able to take the full functionality of utilizing a $30 add-on for the Copilot. So again, would recommend moving up to the Microsoft Business Premium License type if you want to get the full-fledged functionality of the Copilot today. So now that we kind of got out what's available, what I believe is going to be on the roadmap for early stages of 2024, let's well, kind of reverse a little bit and get into what is Microsoft Discovery Copilot and how is it different from other AI solutions out there? Now, I think this little chart here kind of shows uh, graphically a good representation of how 365 works. And it all starts in the middle of the prompt. So a user will have the ability to utilize the Microsoft 365 Copilot as a chat service within Office 365 or also embedded Copilot links within each application set that Copilot can integrate into. From there, the user will prompt it what it's looking for, bring in a piece of file, find out some information on the web, create a document or something along those lines, but it all starts from that prompt that occurs within Microsoft 365. From that prompt, Microsoft will take the information and go into multiple large language models. And this is where all the magic happens. It will go to uh, GPT-4 for any chatting text-based type prompts. It will also look at the large language model DaVinci if it has any type of analytical or math-based questions. It will go into the Codex large language models if you have any coding-based questions or the fun, and sometimes you can spend a whole bunch of time in this one, it can go into the DAL E3 license for a, a large language model for any type of image-based request and recommend playing with that if you have not played with that today. Now, what makes Microsoft Copilot different is Microsoft uses a thing called grounding, which is a process that improves the quality and relevance, relevance of the response generated by the large language models. Grounding involves the pre-processing the user's input prompt by adding additional information from the user's data in the Microsoft graph, such as your messages, your meetings, emails, files, to the user's prompt itself. This helps the large language models to understand the user's context and tasks better and provide more accurate, specific, and actionable answers. Grounding also respects the user's data privacy and security and to access the, to only access the data the user has permission to access and view, sort of like what I mentioned on the Microsoft Business Standard, because they can't quite get into that. You need to be able to see the user's access level. And the most important thing I find here is it does not use that information to train the large language model itself. Grounding is a key feature of Microsoft 365 Copilot as it will help users work on work-related questions and tasks, such as what's important them to do today, as well as how to write a report. Now let's take a look to see how Microsoft Copilot can work in Outlook, um, as well as other application sets. And I'm going to go through all the key applications here, and within each one, I have a slight little video of how it can be utilized. So productivity and virtual assistance AI tools in Outlook can help automate routine tasks, provide personal recommendations, streamline workflows to help businesses optimize the resource, as well as drive cost reduction. You can create emails quickly by letting Copilot generate a draft based on your topic, recipient, or purpose. You can rewrite your text with different words or tones, such as formal, casual, friendly, and you'll find that as a similar theme throughout the other application sets. You can uh, generate a summary of long email conversations with annotations, action items, replies, as well as follow-up for meetings. You can chat with Copilot to find additional details and facts or sources to enhance or support your email. You can also get coaching from Copilot to adjust your tone, clarity, or, or read or sentiment of your email before you hit that send button. Now, this video I have here shows uh, Outlook, uh, Copilot in, in, uh, at work here in Outlook. It's saying, let's go ahead and catch it with Copilot, and it will scour your email and see what you have not read and provide you a little bit of a summary of what's to come. You can see here within the uh, catch up with Copilot, it found you have an invitation to host a, a karaoke morale meeting tomorrow a lively conversation about revenue trends and an update from Jesse on 2023 financials. When you hit click the start catch up, it'll go through your emails quickly and bring you right straight to those emails that thinks it's important for you to review so you can get to business and continue your day. 
optimizing uh, your business operations with Excel and Copilot you, helps you understand your data um, and make sure that it's critical for businesses to stay competitive today. Microsoft 365 Copilot tools in Excel analyze behavior data from various sources, browsing patterns, and social media activities to help provide insights into your corporate data. You can analyze and explore your data with natural language questions instead of complex formulas. You can reveal correlations, propose what-if scenarios, and suggest new formulas based on your questions. You can generate powerful visualizations to help identify trends and insights into your data. And you can help highlight and filter and sort your data effortlessly with Copilot's assistant. You can create formula column suggestions for complex calculations with the help of Copilot. Now, this video right here shows a, uh, a, a, an Excel file here that has some uh, corporate business information. I'm going to hit play and it will show you. It's going to click on the Copilot button, analyze this information and bring the three key trends. And quickly we'll go through all the information here and provide the, provide the three key trends it thought was the most important from the relevant information. Sales are trending up for clients, manufacturer costs are, costs are down, and low discount products made up for nearly half the total sum of sales. Now this is information you could have popped into a Power BI to get that information out, but quickly Copilot can find it for you so you can take and elaborate from there, maybe drop, drop into an email, create a Word documentation from it, the other piece in here I find that helps with Copilot is it allows you to find more information out. You can see here that it does have an explain button. So you can click explain and it will tell you how it came to the conclusion of those key trends based on the information you provided it. Text content creation and management, I would say, is the top category for conversational AI second to chatbots. Um, and what has contributed to the rapid adoption of chat GPT by the masses. Text content creation and management are critical aspects of business communication, productivity, sales, and marketing strategies. Microsoft 365 Copilot is one of the top AI-driven text content creation and management, as you can use that technique I talked about earlier called grounding, which will bring the corporate information together. Let Copilot um, and Word generate a draft based on a topic or prompt or build on what you already have. You can use Copilot also to rewrite your text with different words or tones, such as formal, casual, or creative, kind of like I mentioned in the Outlook piece. You can create Copilot, uh, use Copilot to convert text into editable tables, columns, and rows. And you can ex uh, ask Copilot to help find additional information, facts, and sources to enhance and support your document. You can use Copilot to create a concise summary of your document or a specific section. Now, this video right here shows. Let's go ahead and take a uh, what you've already created with a OneNote, bring in some information from the product roadmap, and build a presentation, a proposal. So it'll comb through that information pretty quickly, and then bring up what is considered the first draft. And from there, you can take and enhance that information, make it your own words, and then build from there. So you're not kind of stuck with that old white page syndrome where you don't know how to start. It can instantly bring that information together based on other corporate information you've already created. Now, I'm really looking forward to Copilot playing around with this in PowerPoint. Um, I do think this video here kind of really encapsulates it. So this video here shows, I'm going to grab a file already created from Word, and instantly you'll create a, a, a presentation within PowerPoint, as well as bringing in re relevant stock photos into the presentation as well. You can then maybe potentially consolidate presentation into a summary if you want to kind of put out an email about what this pro uh, presentation is going to be about. And then you can use the chatbot within, um, within Copilot for PowerPoint to potentially reformat and restructure presentation pretty easily. Now with Copilot and Teams, it will help you have more effective meetings by summarizing key discussion points and suggestion actions in real time. You have the ability to catch up on chats by reviewing main points, action items, and discussions without scrolling through long threads or even being at the meeting itself. You can bring together all the emails into Teams by finding information from the documents, emails, and the calendar invites, and much, much more. Now, this email right here, this actually video I have here, can show you what's going on and within a Teams meeting. So I can go ahead and click on play. Now, the key part actually for this is, is you need to make sure you have transcripting working within Teams itself for Copilot to be take a part of it and actually analyze what's occurring. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on play, and it's gonna recap this meeting. It'll take the out and output what's going on in the transcript and tell you what's occurring. So Copilot went in here and found out, hey, there's long issues. There's issues with long lead time. Uh, there's also uh, lead times for recyclables up to six days. And there's a follow-up for Serena and Beth to have a follow-up discussion based on this information. 
And the next piece here I find even more fascinating, it can actually go into sentiment. So how the group feel about the inventory status. And based on the information provided within the document itself, I will say the group seems to have mixed feelings. On one hand, they're happy. On one hand, they're a little bit worried about what's occurring. So it can really get a good understanding of what happened in the meeting without having to watch that whole half an hour, 45 minute meeting based on what copilots come up with. Now, next, I have a video that kind of brings this all together and shows you how you can take, utilize Microsoft 365 Copilot and see in action how it occurs from utilizing Copilot in the chat feature and then bring in all the different applications into one. Introducing Microsoft 365 Chat, a powerful new capability in Microsoft 365 to solve your most complex problems at work. Let's say you're a marketer at a national chain of home improvement stores and you need to get the latest on the store opening. You start your day with Copilot, asking what's hot in your inbox today. It does some thinking and gives you an overview of the most pressing items. Great. Looks like the new store opening plans could use your attention. Let's dive in deeper there. Copilot comes through all your recent emails, chats, documents, and meetings, whether you attended them or not, to get you up to speed in moments. It didn't just summarize a single document. It knew what sources to pull from and what information to extract from each. Next, you need to do some market research. Let's say you want details on square footage and the proximity of competitors to your new location. M365 Chat scours the web, and within seconds, it finds everything you're looking for. And it includes references, so you can easily fact check the results. You're curious, how does this stack up against the other stores you're opening in the past year? Copilot figures out which stores you mean, crunches the numbers, and gives you the answer. Next on your to-do list, finalize the date and speaker for the opening event. You missed the last meeting, and this might have come up in the conversation. Copilot's got you covered, getting you up to speed in seconds. Looks like it was a dynamic discussion, and it's your responsibility to make a final decision. To do that, you need to understand all the factors at play, including the implications they have on your grand opening timeline. Copilot extracts the relevant details and puts them in an organized table, which helps bring the full picture into view. You're not seeing a clear answer, so you ask it to recommend the best date and speaker based on the constraints discussed. It not only understands the constraints, it thinks through the options to help solve your problem. There you go. Now you have a clear recommendation, so you can make the call and notify the team. Now that you've got the opening date, you've got to get customers excited. Time to write a blog post. You point Copilot to the right files and ask it to tune the message to the audience. Note the amount of detail, such as asking it to pick the top five things and make them prominent. Here it goes. Copilot gets to work. Okay, now you've got a blog post. This store will be the first to unveil your new home improvement concierge service, and you need a catchy tagline. Let's generate some options. This is great for when you've got a case of writer's block. Here we go. These look pretty good. Lastly, you wanna highlight the impressive retail experience of the new store manager. Best source for that, LinkedIn. Copilot generates an updated blog for you that includes the new additions. Now, the opening is just around the corner and you've gotta send an email to the team so they have everything they need to push this over the finish line. Now, one of the amazing things about Copilot is you don't need to worry about things like punctuation, spelling, or being super structured. You can give it a total brain dump. You could spend the next hour putting together an email that outlines the key details, but with Copilot, you're never more than a few seconds away from a solid first draft. There was a great quote in the store walkthrough video that you want to include, but you don't remember where you last saw it or have time to search for it, let alone rewatch it to find the quote. Based on your quick description, Copilot finds the exact video you're thinking of, extracts the quote you wanted, and plugs both the quote and the video into your email. So, you like the drafts, but it doesn't sound like you. Introducing Sound Like Me in Outlook. Now you can personalize any email to match your unique style and voice. And check this out, it even knows your signature. M365 Chat is a whole new way to work.
There you go. I, I, for me, I can watch that video over and over and over again and get more excited about actually having Copilot at my fingertips. Uh, that was about four minutes long right there. You saw how quickly it was able to get information and take action from it. So imagine trying to find that information in a corporate setting and how long it would actually take you to do and having Copilot in your wings to be able to help you gather that information, put something together, and then deliver on it. The thing I thought was key, though, is still have you as the operator making it happen and taking it from there, making sure that it worked for you with what it was going for, going through and trying to get to your team. So next we'll get into a little bit what Microsoft's vision is, I feel, for Microsoft Copilot. Uh, Microsoft's Copilot, I think uh, their vision has been able to create a digital companion, as you can see, that will actually go into most of your whole life uh, with a consistent experience across the Bing, Edge, Microsoft 365, as well as Windows. Uh, this little chart here kind of goes into the different capability of each one of those. And I've talked about Microsoft 365 so far in depth right here in this, uh, in this webinar. So it kind of checks all the boxes. You can utilize either within 365 applications within the chat section, as well as it has the enterprise security and privacy and compliance to make sure that you have safeguards in your data. The next piece is the Bing Chat Enterprise. If you haven't played with this yet, I do recommend checking it out. I do like using this um, over ChatGPT. One, if you have the correct licenses involved in it, which I'll get into in a second, it does have that corporate data protection, as well as it's in out, it's right built into the actual Edge browser on the sidebar, which is actually really, really easy to utilize. Uh, Bing Chat Enterprise is a secure and private chat service that leverages the Microsoft Copilot technology. It can help uh, get your work done faster, be more creative, and support your customers better. And some of the advantages of being Chat Enterprise are it can ensure that your business data stays within your organization. It does not get exposed to external parties. Chat data is not saved, and also Microsoft has no eyes to access it. The chat data is not used to train the underlying models, just like the Microsoft 365 Copilot. Bing Chat Enterprise can help uh, you quickly generate content, analyze compared data, summarize documents, learn new skills, write code, and much more. You can ask Bing Chat Enterprise natural language questions requests and get a high quality response or suggestions. And to utilize the Microsoft uh, Bing Chat Enterprise today, it's available if you're utilizing the Microsoft 365 E3 license, E5 license, the A3 and A5 license, Microsoft Business Standard Business Premium License. As you can see here, just like Microsoft 365 Copilot, it wasn't available. We utilize the Office 365 E3, the Office 365 E5, but there are add-on licenses available if you take advantage of those other licensing sets today. Um, you can also use, like I mentioned, Bing Chat Enterprise from bing.com slash chat, or you can utilize it within the Microsoft sidebar, which is actually how I prefer to utilize it. And the Microsoft Windows Copilot also is available in the Microsoft Windows 11, which you can take advantage as well. Now, the Copilot in, Word, in Windows empowers you to create faster, complete tasks with ease. Um, it's accessible from the taskbar within the Windows operating self, um, or you can utilize the Windows plus C keyboard shortcut to get to it. The Copilot in Windows goes beyond just Word. You can drag and drop files into it. You can upload images from chats. You can also use voice input. Um, you can utilize the voice input to say, hey, change dark mode, turn on, do not disturb, take a screenshot and talk to it like it was the Microsoft Cortana type of AI assistant. You can see here in the chart itself, kind of picking where different things occur. So you have the Microsoft Copilot UX experience. It can go into the Bing chat. Now the Microsoft Copilot in Windows itself doesn't have the commercial data protection However, if it does ask a question utilizing the Bing Chat Enterprise, you'll be protected by the corporate data protection there. Now that I give you this information, I get to more like what's next, uh, the call to action. So for most, or in most organizations today, you're probably not gonna spend the $20,000 a month to take advantage of Copilot at the enterprise level. But it doesn't mean you should just kind of wait around and say, hey, when's it gonna come out? I, I think if you're taking a look at what's available to you in Microsoft 365 Copilot today, you can kind of get an understanding of how you might utilize it. And I think the key part is understanding what your current cloud strategy is for your corporate data. If you have your information for your corporate data in another location outside of 365 infrastructure, it won't be able to gather that information and take that analysis for you to easily gain information from utilizing Microsoft Copilot. So it might make sense to say, hey, if I want to take advantage of this new technology coming out, 
let's go ahead and go through a project of uploading this information into, into SharePoint. If I've already made the migration to 365, or maybe I have all my information in a different type of organization structure, like a box or Dropbox, and it might make sense to take a look at bringing that information back to 365 to take advantage of utilizing Copilot. I also do know some companies moved to the cloud a handful of years ago, and there was some cost structures of moving old data to SharePoint that didn't make sense then, because what was it going to do? No one's going to take advantage of it. But now it might be an advantage of having all the information available to Copilot to scour and find some history of corporate data if it makes sense to you as an organization. So it might make sense to bring all that into your corporate data structure within Microsoft 365. So doing a review of how that all lives, what the strategy might be, might be a good part to do is where you start preparing to utilize Microsoft Copilot. Next, I do think it'd be beneficial in the budget season and preparing what that might look like as well from a financial aspect. Uh, so it will be $30 per user per month to take advantage of Copilot. However, depending on your current licensing structure today, you might need to upgrade your license if you're utilizing Office 365 E3 or Office 365 E5 to a Microsoft 365 license instead. And there could be some financial cost implications there that you might want to get ahead of. So when it comes down to actually the Q1, hopefully launch of Copilot, you are already be set up for the approval from finance to say, go ahead, let's start this playing around to see what Copilot can do for you as an organization. The next piece I do think is important is practicing successful prompting. Our CEO did a challenge out early on with the chat GPT of actually playing around with these services and trying it out 15 minutes a day to see what works for you as, an, uh, as a person to get the most out of utilizing a chat GPT or a GPT type service. And it comes down to, I think, is practicing successful prompting, uh, really defining the objective of what you're trying to do and establishing a clear purpose for the prompt itself is key. The more precise, uh, descriptive your prompts, the better Copilot can understand your intent and provide relevant results. For example, instead of asking it to write a summary, you can say, write a summary of main points and action items from the meeting transcript. And then from constructing that initial prompt as well as creating a concise prompt to begin the process. For example, summarize the following news article, then it can be refined and expanded as needed. You can also employ control mechanisms and experiment with various control, te control techniques such as token prefixes and postfixes to guide AI's response. For example, prepend the sentence using a professional tone to influence the tone of generated text. Also, using examples can be healthy, uh, helpful. If you want Copilot to generate content in a certain style, format, or tone, you can provide examples or keywords to help guide it. Um, for example, you want Copilot to write a poem for you about love, you can generate some, uh, give it some examples uh, for the poem you like, such as keywords or romantic rhyme or sonnet. And lastly, you can evaluate and iterate, and assess the output from the responses of the initial prompt. You know, modify the prompt as necessary to improve on the outcome. For instance, providing a concise three sentence summary for the following news article and iterate until the desired result is achieved. Copilot is not perfect and it will not always be perfect and will make mistakes and generate inaccurate and inappropriate content. You should always review, modify, and iterate the Copilot suggestion before using them. You can also provide feedback to Copilot once it comes up by clicking a thumbs up or thumbs down icon, which will help improve the information over time. And lastly, Thing is important to uh, point out you are the pilot you're on the microsoft copilot i feel and all the other copilot terminology out there is named correctly it's there to help you and assist you and find the information you need but at the end of the day you're the commander you're the pilot that's supposed to be kind of driving the ship and taking that information and taking the analysis that comes back to you and making sure it corrects make sure it sounds correctly with trying to get out to the information that you're trying to propose to your teams or to the world or a blog post you are responsible for what you're posting out there. And I can definitely see people going, well, Copilot said this and kind of going from there. But again, you're responsible then day for the information brought to you back from Microsoft Copilot. So that's all I have for you today. I'm happy to answer any questions. I hope you're excited about this Microsoft technology as much as I am. And I definitely know that we'll be having some future lunch and learns to dive more into tips and tricks of how to utilize this once we get our hands on as well to make sure to kind of drive adoption and make sure you're utilizing a $30 add-on tool to its most efficient process. So I'll open this up to the uh, Q&A section. So please put some questions in there. Happy to answer anything that I might know already or get some questions and answers back to you in the future. 
I do have one question here. Um, is it true that you need to purchase 300 licenses of Office Copilot today to, uh, to use a product in an enterprise setting? Yes, that is currently true. There's a minimum level commitment of 300 licenses at $30 a pop, so $9,000 a year, $1,000 a month to take advantage of Copilot. So if you don't have 300 best friends to utilize in your, in your tenancy, I recommend kind of holding off until hopefully the Q1 launch when they won't have that minimum level commitment there for you today. Uh, next question, uh, do we need to be on Windows 11 to maximize value? And the answer is no for Microsoft 365 Copilot. It actually doesn't need to be on um, Windows 11. Definitely want to be on a supported operating system. Windows 10 will definitely work with it as well, but it doesn't matter what the underlying operating system you're utilizing today. It will help out with utilizing Microsoft Enterprise applications, uh, but it has nothing to do with the actual Windows operating system itself. Great questions, by the way. I got a, a great question here. <laughs> um, uh, what will I do with all my free time? Uh, is training need to familiar, familiarize ourselves with Copilot? And if so, will training be available on the uh, Intiva Training as a Service uh, platform? 100% yes, training will be available on the, um, on the Intiva Training platform, Training as a Service platform, once it becomes available for us to actually have the training be developed. So that's something I will see that will be, I do foresee us having available within that platform itself. As far as what the ETA is, I don't have that available. Um, and I do imagine that there will be some training necessary to kind of get the full capability out of Copilot, but I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit above something that you kind of play around with yourself, see what works with you, what, what doesn't work, how, you know, and it's going to be a lot of time I talked about beforehand of that actual practicing the, uh, the prompting correctly it really comes down to how you're forming your questions and to getting the answers that you want out of it and then reiterating if it doesn't get it correctly. So I think there's going to be more of that training aspect internally, but it's going to come from actually the practicing and probably watching the videos of how to utilize the service. Uh, I got another question here. I've seen Copilot built into some apps. Do you have a list of uh, where we could expect to see it in the coming months uh, versus standalone Copilot itself? Um, I don't have any list of applications where I see this will be coming into place outside the Microsoft 365 uh, um, platform. Uh, I, you'll definitely have it in. If you're talking Microsoft, you'll definitely have it in your Microsoft Outlook, your, your Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Uh, Teams, OneNote will all be available, but as far as if it would be third-party um, application you talk about, I'm not aware of what the plans are there for Microsoft. I do imagine there will be tie-ins to this platform as well. However, I, I think third-party tie-ins will definitely need to be closely looked at as uh, organization per organization. The more third-party applications that come into this, especially if it's coming to your 365 tenancy, how it all connects, you do have a risk of potential security breaches of things along those lines. So again, it comes down to what the risk reward is, depending on how that all kind of interoperates, but definitely it will have no issues with privacy and security if it is within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. All great questions. Anything else out there? Oh, um, so I see what, so, um, the person was also talking about Power Automate. Yes, I, I do foresee this coming to Power Automate. Um, actually, Copilot is a little bit there today to help um, create Power Apps. Um, you can play around with it within Copilot within the Power Apps today. As far as having Microsoft 365 Copilot, how it operates between other applications, I don't know what that's going to look like. But I do know that in Power Apps and Power Automate, you can ask it questions as well if you have those license sets to help potentially create some uh, coding or kind of figure out what the best power app possibly you can create based on what functionality you're trying to do. So that is available right now to play with if you want. Another question here, working on uh, intellectual content and sensitive information, can files be grouped and applied to users, teams, groups based on security access? Example, have my own uh, director uh, directories of files in which groups can draw from. The answer for that is yes. Uh, and that's what comes down to utilizing Microsoft Business Premier Higher Type Licensing. Gets into what's called the Azure Information Protection Plan for providing data governance. 
you can actually create, um, uh, I guess, links or tags to files that certain individuals have access to it or don't based on the functionality and roles within the organization. It does take a little bit of time to set those up to make sure that it's put through correctly. You can actually even apply, go a step further and put in higher level encryption on certain file types if they're confidentially or intellectual content as well to make sure that even if the information gets out into the world from 365, no one can access it because it has encryption on the file itself. So definitely the answer is yes there. Is Next question, is Bing Chat Enterprise included in E3 or E5 or is it a separate license? Um, it is included if it is utilizing which Microsoft's naming schemes always confuse people. I don't know why they do it this way. Um, they have Microsoft 365 E3, E5 licenses does include utilizing the Bing Chat Enterprise. If you have Office 365 E3 and E5 licenses, it does not include that and you have to purchase an additional add-on license. Um, you also have the ability if you have Microsoft Business Standard, Microsoft Business Premium as well, those include the license type as well. So it has to have that Microsoft 365 piece in front of it, not the Office 365. So I hope I answered that question there. How can I find out what licenses we currently have at our company um, and what is is or is not included? So if you're an Antiva uh, client here, definitely reach out to your account manager to find out what license type you have. Uh, it's also potentially be on your invoice from Antiva as well, which ones are there and how many you have available. If you're not an Antiva client, I definitely recommend checking out your Microsoft 365 Partner Center. You can jump into there, um, into the portal and tell you what license type as long as you have the appropriate um, access level to get into the admin center within 365 to see what license it is. Uh, let's see here, does Bing Chat Enterprise include results from SharePoint or is, or is that exclusive to 365 Enterprise Copilot license? Great question. Um, so, uh, so, so the Bing Chat Enterprise does not have access to your corporate data. So that's where it stops. It's really just a chat feature. Uh, here, I can bring it down. Oh, give me a second. So here's Edge right here. Um, and here's the sidebar. If, it, if anyone's played with Edge, I have to say, I've, I've, you know, I used to use um, Chrome all the time. I've moved the full switch over to Edge. I really do like utilizing it. On the right side, it does have a thing called a sidebar. And at the sidebar, it has this little co-pilot icon you can click on. And from here, you can ask it anything. Um, this is a chat feature. It does not have access into the files itself. Now, it doesn't mean I can't copy a file in there or things along that line. So I can copy and paste things from Word, Excel, and ask information on it. Um, the other thing here within the chat Bing, here's the www.bing.com. Um, you go in here, you can see I had my name in here. I'm protected. I can see that I'm protected because I have the correct uh, license type. And now any information I put in here that could be centered private or secure or sensitive will not make it over to the large language models and it will not train the system. If you're ever curious about what type of protection it has on here, you can always click on this uh, information. It'll give you some more information on the security level itself. And... There you go. This, I took a screenshot of this earlier of uh, what the security level looks like utilizing the Microsoft 365 Bing technology. So on the on the left side here, it shows you how it all works. Um, so uh, you see number one, you know, it, it, the chat entry point, the prompt. It all starts again talking about the prompt. And so once you put in a prompt, it takes a look again what's your access level. So we'll take a look at Microsoft Intra ID uh, was just recently renamed from Azure from uh, Active Directory P1. Um, in there, I'll go into your Microsoft graph data to find out if you have access to utilize the enterprise chat. And from there, it will send all the information over to the Bing chat enterprise through the user chat session, utilize the Bing chat orchestrator. And from there, it goes out to the large language models and goes into that information. So the information you're putting through that might have privacy information never makes it over to the large language models. And key part, it does not train the underlying models itself. Any other questions? These are all good ones.
And back to the Bean Chat Enterprise, if you have the correct license, again, highly recommend sharing it, playing around. It does provide a lot of information. Um, I also, if you don't mind, you know, playing around it, you can put in there certain things like actually I did for this picture and take advantage of trying the Dolly E3 experience. So for this picture, I use this uh, creating it from the Dolly E3 through the Microsoft uh, Bing Chat Enterprise of creating a uh, executive sleeping on the plane while the co-pilot is flying the airplane in the style of Norman Rockwell. And I feel based on what I described to it, it kind of nailed that picture pretty uh, pretty quickly. So it's fun to kind of put around, put that information in there and see what comes out of it. And again, it comes down to, I had to do multiple iterations of that prompt to get what I wanted out of it. It probably just took me a minute or two, but I did have to refine what I was asking for to find that pure picture that I was looking to put into this presentation. So a lot of fun to play around with as well. All right, I think that looks like all the questions we have today. And I definitely promise you this is not the last time we talk about Microsoft Copilot. Once we get our hands on it, start playing with it ourselves. I do plan on having another webinar, lunch and learn session to show you how I can utilize it or utilizing it as an organization to help us to move itself further. Um, but again, until then, I look forward to speaking with you all sometime soon in the near future. We'll have our lunch and learns kick back off in the 2024 timeframe. Hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and thank you for your time. Have a great day.